what are the kinds of things that are going to get you further in this industry when you're a new MLO? What's up everybody? Cullen Gandy here coming at you with another video about personal finance, mortgage finance, just general business tips to get your life going in the right direction. Today marks pretty much the end of the first quarter of 2021 and it so happens it marks the end of my first six months as a new mortgage loan originator. And so I thought I'd go over in this video some of these things that I've kind of learned as I've gotten started in this industry. And basically I wanted to tell you some of the things that helped me become successful and other things that really kind of ended up being useless and maybe are pitfalls that you want to kind of avoid. But before I get into all of that, if you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and leave a like at the end of the video and uh, consider subscribing to this channel. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm immensely. And go ahead and check out some of my other videos on topics like how to work with ADD, how to sort of break into the mortgage industry, and how to sort of sell people once you're inside because that's pretty much the most most important part of your job. So my transition into the mortgage industry was sort of based out of necessity as I think a lot of people in this period of uh, history can kind of relate to. This time last year marks the beginning of a certain event that YouTube doesn't really like us talking about for ad revenue purposes. Not that that particularly pertains to me having at most usually about a hundred views per video over a period of time. But let's just say that there was some kind of major event that makes people stay inside of their homes and a lot of people in the process probably lost their jobs. I was no different. Uh, as a trained opera singer, uh, I sang for a major opera company here in Chicago. And if you're not familiar with the opera industry, uh, a lot of the audience is on the older side, the older persuasion, if you will, of the spectrum of age. So as you can imagine, having a bunch of these generally older folks sitting around watching a three or four hour opera pretty much right next to one another, inches from one another, isn't the best idea when you have the most vulnerable population. As a result, folks like me were kind of out of the job for a long time. Now, I was one of the fortunate ones where I was employed as an artist. That's not always a thing that artists are. A lot of times people are contracted out. Uh, I was a W-2 employee, so I couldn't complain as much but I always do find a way. However, after everybody got put on furlough, I sort of rode the wave for the first three months thinking, eh, maybe things will kick back into gear. Maybe I'll be able to sort of recoup my losses and go right back into my old life. However, after the fifth and sixth month, I thought, okay, now we need to make a change. This is what prompted me to get licensed and dip my toe into this industry. And I gotta say, I haven't looked back since. And so the first major cool thing that I've learned about the mortgage industry and particularly the role of the mortgage loan originator is it is something that is accessible to almost anyone if they have enough wherewithal to get to it. The amount of education you need to become licensed is relatively small. Uh, you can do it within the period of a week or a couple of weeks and by the end of the month you could probably find a reputable company with which to work. And that's actually what happened to me and my girlfriend as well. In fact, my girlfriend Cristal had no experience in sales whatsoever. But these companies, because we are at historically low interest rates coming from the Federal Reserve, uh, are just hiring people, or at least they were hiring people left and right to fill these roles that were desperately needed. But that's not why you're here. If you're watching this video about becoming an MLO or taking the test or doing any of these other things, you're probably already interested or maybe already in the industry. So the next step is, what are the kinds of things that are gonna get you further in this industry when you're a new MLO? So one, initially when you are looking to become an MLO, look for somewhere that might not have the best terms but have really accessible management and management that's willing to teach you how the game is played. This is really valuable because as an MLO, one, a lot of times these companies will help you become licensed not only in one state, but in multiple states. In fact, I am licensed in 14 states currently, which means I have access to the population of almost half of the country at my fingertips that I didn't pay anything extra to get. This is something that is transferable whether or not you move from one company to another. So this also makes you a really valuable asset as a mortgage loan originator in the greater financial industry as a whole. You can transfer to banks, you can transfer into brokers, 
uh, you can transfer even to uh, mortgage banks as well. If you have licensure, you become an asset and you almost immediately start hearing from all of these other kinds of recruiters because you have definitely become something that is valuable just by virtue of having access to millions more people than other new MLOs might have. So the really big one, find really good management that's willing to teach you Get as many licenses as you possibly can because that can only benefit you in the long run. And then once you start to work in the industry by calling out and receiving inbound leads, if there are a lot of calls to be had, please just put as much work into it as you want to get out of it because this is an industry where you can become paid relatively quickly. I myself have already gotten to a pay level that has exceeded my former industry by a fair, I mean, by almost more than twice, I think more than twice at this point. Uh, so you can make a lot of money. And so if you do have a lot of calls to, to make and to take, by all means, you know, take as many as you can and try to lock as many loans and close as many loans as you can because the mortgage industry is really cyclical uh, it can have its highs like right now we are in a mortgage boom but then you know it can have its lows as well where people aren't really refinancing as much but you might not be in spring so there's not that big push for purchase business and you might just be out of luck for a little while so while you have the calls to make Go ahead and make them and try to sell those callers. Three, what's really important when you're a new MLO, and I know this isn't going to sound that attractive, but it isn't the amount of money that you think that you can make, whether it be on commissions or whether it be on units, what you're getting back. I know that's sort of counterintuitive because you want to go into the industry to make money, but I think what's more valuable and what's more sustainable long term is if you get into a company and get into the industry with the mindset that you are going to learn the industry for a long term understanding. Because if you end up making a lot of money at the beginning, but uh, as is the case in my situation, you've only done one kind of mortgage like for us. Uh, I've only done refinances that are conventional uh, qualified mortgages. Then you're kind of a one trick pony. So you want to get a holistic view of the industry and not be afraid to move around and feel out different kinds of products. And if you're not happy, feel out different kinds of companies. I'm really, really fortunate. I work for a brilliant large online lender and they're constantly adding new and better and bigger programs to their roster. Right now we're doing jumbo programs at Interfirst uh, and we're also going to be doing uh, what's, what's called non-qualified mortgages or non-conventional mortgages. So we're constantly adding things to my repertoire that I can learn from and that I can adapt into my repertoire. When you go into the industry with a mindset that you're going to soak everything in and that you're going to engage with the managers and create new relationships, the money, I guarantee you, will roll in. And that's what's happened to me. You know, I've only been in this industry for six months, but we have a scenario where with a certain amount of production, you're locked into a higher pay tier for a several quarters. I think it's two quarters for me. Uh, and that actually is really beneficial, you know, if that's the way you want to go as a new MLO, that can give you some stability while at the same time you can learn, you know, the ropes of the industry to where, you know, a couple years down the line, you might be comfortable going out and venturing on your own, stepping up as a broker or stepping up for another kind of institution that's more niche and more specialized. One of the best pieces I can give you when it comes to expanding your reach in this industry is to uh, specialize in a certain type of loan and a certain type of borrower. And a lot of different lenders do this where they have a certain type of loan that they seem to be really good at selling at a certain period in time. Uh, get into those borrowers, understand those borrowers, and then expand out from there and broaden your horizons. Just like it's good to broaden your products knowledge, uh, whether that be FHA loans or other government loans, or just conventional loans as well, uh, so too is it good to broaden your knowledge of the um, motivations and the psychology of different borrowers. The kind of borrowers that are wanting a regular conventional mortgage, they're going to have certain expectations that perhaps uh, a borrower who needs an FHA mortgage or a VA mortgage or a USDA mortgage just aren't going to have. It's important to know what makes these folks tick so that you can make sure that whoever you get coming in down the line, you understand how to engage with those folks and how to convert that lead into a client that actually funds and sells. 
And the last thing that I think a lot of people don't really think about or, or might overlook is to engage a network within your own company to get the most benefit and to give benefit to others. Whether that means to ask questions of more seasoned or more skilled uh, loan officers than yourself or to get advice from management. This can be something that can really up your short term game and, and your long term game. I'll give you an example. The first day that I got to my company Enter First, I had a vision. I wanted to set my production to where I was going to receive either the top tier pay or the second you know, tier pay. And that's a pretty ambitious thing to do when you're just getting into an industry and just starting out a new company. So what I did is I looked at who I knew to be the top producer in the company and I just mimicked them. It's something that I do as an actor, and I thought, hey, why don't I just try it as a salesman and a mortgage loan originator? So I did everything that this guy did. So we have this app called Slack, and on it you can chat with your different colleagues, and it tells you whenever they're on. So whenever they were on, and I saw that their little button was green, I would be on, and I would be engaging with clients at that time. Also, I would ask them, hey, what are the things that contributed to your success early on in this company and in this industry? A lot of times they would have things you wouldn't even think about, like hardware requirements that other people didn't have. For example, I asked the major producer at my company, hey look, what's the thing that really gets you more loans? And he said, actually, I've got a one gigabyte download speed. And so for our you know, voice over internet protocol, if you have a faster download speed, then you get the calls first. So I adapted to that. I got a new internet setup and I became the top producer within my pod of salespeople literally within the first four weeks. Don't be afraid to be the squeaky wheel. If you are a salesman, you are selling everybody, whether that be selling the client to buy your product or selling your management and your colleagues and the operations staff on doing more of their jobs more efficiently or quicker or asking them if they need any help doing so. I can't tell you how many times I would constantly be asking my manager, hey, can you check up on this thing for me? Or throwing a question or an email over to a processor. Hey, can we follow up on this condition for them? Please, please, please don't content to just follow up one time, whether that be with a client or the management or the back end. Just constantly be following up. That is the one thing that is going to get your production to the next level. Some people may be more charismatic salespeople than you, but if you are more persistent and you are more repetitive than them, uh, then you are going to get that loan because if not for any other reason, they're just gonna wanna stop having these messages come in. That being said, always be polite, just always be following up. This is the thing that gets you the big money in this industry. That's gonna wrap it up for this session of what I've learned during the first two quarters of my career as a mortgage loan originator. I might come out with some more as they sort of come into my brain. So like I said, everybody, if any of this was helpful to you, please go ahead and leave me a like for that YouTube algorithm so I can help bring more of this just absolute content, this just content to you <laughs> as well hit me with the subscribe and let me know, hey, what are some of the things that helped you in this industry earlier on or that you're currently discovering as you move along your path? I'd love to hear uh, in the comments below. I love to just hear from people in general. Uh, and so let me know about that. Thanks so much, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.